Good evening. Welcome to our virtual candlelight vigil. Every year during National Crime Victims Rights Week, we gather to remember our loved ones, our community members who were taken from us by homicide. We focus on hope, healing, and renew our commitment to work towards safer community. We will begin this year's program with a message from Pima County Sheriff Napier. Hello, I'm Pima County Sheriff Mark Napier. I have had a long sustained relationship with homicide survivors that goes back many decades. As we, we think about that again in this period where we would normally have our memorial to recognize those people who are victims of homicide in our community, I want to remind the community that we need to seek justice for these people. They're not just a number, just not a crime stat, but real people with real family members that loved them and cared for them. And we need to seek justice for those victims. But we also need to ensure victim rights because every victim leaves behind a family member that loved them and, and cared for them. And these people deserve to be treated with dignity and respect in our criminal justice system. And finally, we need to inspire hope in our community that every homicide is taken seriously, that we as a community come together and grieve with the victim's family, and that we inspire the hope that this one will not just be another number, but rather inspire motivation to eliminate violence in our community and treat every one of these victims as if they were a member of our family, because truly they are a member of the family in our community. Thank you. Next, we will hear from the Pima County Attorney's Office. Here's Deputy Pima County Attorney, Dan South. My name is Dan South, and I'm the Bureau Chief of Community Protection at the Pima County Attorney's Office. On behalf of the Pima County Attorney, Barbara Lawal, and all of our dedicated attorneys, advocates, detectives, and support staff, I'd like to take a moment to reflect on this past year. During this, the National Crime Victim Rights Week, we honor those individuals and groups who have advocated so tirelessly on behalf of justice and accountability in our community. And we honor those families who have suffered tragedy. We remember, and we will never forget, those members of our community, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, whose lives have been taken far too soon. And whether the loss was this year or 20 years ago, we know the pain is still very real. Often the memory of a last kiss to a loved one, or a song playing on the radio, or another birthday party missed, can be painful reminders that a piece of your heart is still missing. But to the survivors and family and friends who carry on, the strength that you show is an inspiration. And while you've grieved, you've also shown our community that you're incredibly strong and you're resilient. Many of you have stood up in court. You've refused to let your loved ones be forgotten. You've met tirelessly with police officers and prosecutors and advocates. You've endured months, sometimes years of waiting for justice. You have been strong so those around you can be strong. And I can tell you, being a career prosecutor, that there's no prouder moment than to stand beside you as you give the court your impact statement. You give your loved ones a voice, and we're so thankful for your courage and your inspiration. And we want you to know that you're not alone, because while going through some of the toughest of times is scary and uncertain, it's always better when you have someone there who cares, standing by your side. So I want to acknowledge the advocates in this office who work tirelessly to ensure surviving families don't face this grief alone. Our Victim Services Division makes more than 16,000 victim contacts each year and provides important services to more than 10,000 victims of crime and crisis. And to our advocates who answer crisis calls in the middle of the night, who work around the clock ensuring that victims get the support that they need, thank you. The work that you do empowers victims to face a complex and seemingly unfair criminal justice system but you give them strength to start rebuilding their lives. What you do matters so much. I also want to acknowledge the support, dedication, and tireless work of homicide survivors. This organization not only provides some services and support to victims that they desperately need, but they've also become a driving force in the push for legislative changes that protect victims' rights. 
So to all of our colleagues and homicide survivors, thank you for what you do. To our law enforcement partners who are on the front lines, you're often the first face that a crime victim sees when help arrives. Your dedication and bravery ensures that victims are safe from their abusers and that we prosecutors have the evidence that we need to take them to court. And together with you, we hold them accountable. In these unprecedented times, we're saddened that we can't be there with you in person. But on behalf of the Pima County Attorney, Barbara Lewall, and our dedicated team, we want to thank you for keeping the spirit of this event alive during these very difficult times. Please know we're still here fighting every day to hold offenders accountable, reviewing cases, attending court hearings, and we'll continue to make sure that our streets are safe from these offenders. Lastly, to the victims and surviving families, we want to affirm to you our unwavering support and commitment. Now and in the future, we will continue to fight on your behalf for justice and accountability, and we thank you so much for your commitment and support. Survivor stories are at the very core of homicide survivors as an organization. Next, we will hear from April Barbosa and her story of hope and healing. Our daughter, Rosada Barbosa, was 18 years old when her life on earth was callously ended. She was a vibrant, funny, outgoing young lady who worked hard, who loved family, loved to socialize, Love to make new friends, loved helping people, and most of all, she loved her dog Gizmo. Tragically, her life was cut short on May 6, 2018. That day was the start of the darkest times in our lives. Our family's life has stopped, just as many as your family's lives have stopped, though it continues. Not many people understand what that means when I say it. But I know most of you do. We go through the routine of holidays, anniversaries, and birthdays, all the while feeling a huge peace missing. We watch those around us as their lives continue unchanged. Our every day is now a facade of trying to be normal, yet feeling devastated. Days pass and those around us quit mentioning our loved ones. Some start to feel uncomfortable with the sadness we carry. So they begin to avoid us or find reasons to quit talking to us altogether. When we are down, they ask what is wrong and then get irritated that we are still holding on to that pain. The world expects us to just be okay when there is no okay. How can we be okay when we were sideswiped out of nowhere with the loss of a piece of us? Our days don't go on. We are new people, yet our lives have stopped. There is a fog that blocks us from living as others do. Yet we continue in this fog and feel weighed down emotions that no longer have the bright gleam as they did in the past. Because we know humans are capable of atrocious things and we have personally experienced this. The person who killed our daughter was sentenced to a small 20 years. The prosecutors fought their hardest, but when it came down to it, our laws failed us. There is no justice in this world. The only justice is for our loved ones to never have been hurt in the first place. Be vigilant and stand up for injustice. If you see something, say something. We are the voices of the ones who are no longer here. We are homicide survivors, a tribe of people who understand each other. If it wasn't for homicide survivors, life would be even darker than it is now. The way we met is terrible, but it is a blessing to have you all in my life. Stay positive, hold on to the memory of your loved one, and never give up. And now, a special musical presentation from Armando Moreno, from Armando Moreno and the Southern Revival. He will be playing an original composition called It's All Right. No, say not a good, can't 
And now, here is survivor Susie Stumper, who will be sharing her story with all of you. Hi, my name is Susan Stumper. My daughter, Marilyn Patricia Pacheco, 25 years old, was murdered by her ex-boyfriend June 29, 2019, while driving down I-19. She left behind quite a few family members, including a daughter, she was seven at the time, she's eight now, and she is desperately missing her mommy. We all are. We've been struggling with finding a new norm. We don't want to. I hate it. But with this pandemic on top of us, it's just made it impossible. Suffering the loss of my daughter, my only living child, it's just such a nightmare that I know that we are all going through. This isn't the first trauma that my family has experienced. 45 years ago, my sister was murdered. She was only 15. She never got any type of justice. None. Nobody paid for that death, nor the, the other child that was with her, who was also murdered. He never got justices either. He never got justice. Losing my daughter has brought that trauma back to life for us. So that's something more that we're dealing with as a family, is the death of my sister. 45 years ago. These two girls, Marilyn, Patricia, and my sister Patricia, her namesake, we believe they are now together and, and that keeps, that gives us hope that we'll all be together again someday. We have 
developed a nonprofit organization. It's Maryland's No More Fear. It's a fight against domestic violence. This is one way that we are working at keeping Marilyn's name out there and keeping her memory alive, trying to assist other women that may be going through the same thing that she lived through. May not be able to help her in this life anymore, but I can try to help somebody else prevent another family from joining our group. I'm very thankful for HSI and even Akasi for doing everything that they have done for us. It's unbelievable. My mom had to endure the death of my sister alone. Nobody to talk to. Everybody left. Her friends. Nobody would mention my sister's name anymore. So her seeing what HSI does for us in keeping their memory alive and being there to help us, therapy sessions, support groups, each other as survivors. She is so pleased and so shocked and so thankful that I have that. My family has that. We have support. We need support. So I want to thank HSI and even Akasi for doing everything that they have done for us. And it is so wonderful too to have HSI, Victims Advocate, go with me, go with my family to court because her ex-boyfriend is in jail and we are still going through those proceedings. It's just a very difficult thing to have to do. But it is so nice to have somebody standing there with you. To be able to show that support, including the Pima County Court Advocate. I am so incredibly grateful and thankful to you all. No, I don't want to be a member of this group, but I am. And I am thankful for you all. And now a special message from Chief of Police for the Tucson Police Department, Chief Magnus. Good evening. Thank you for attending Homicide Survivors Virtual Candlelight Vigil. This is a new experience for all of us as we learn new ways to come together to support each other. You know, these are strange times and they require that we do things differently than we're used to. For now, we show people that we care by not giving them hugs, by speaking through masks, by keeping our distance, by holding this kind of vigil instead of an in-person one. People who lose a loved one to homicide need our care and support. We may not be able to be together for now, but we can still do one of the most important things a person can do for another. We can listen. Listening and being heard are a big part of the healing process. We can also act. While this is not a time for large gatherings, we can still reach out to our elected representatives and let them know our priorities. We can still advocate on behalf of those impacted by violence and we can still honor the memory of those we lost by the actions we take in their name. At the Tucson Police Department, we continue to investigate these terrible crimes and we continue to work to hold the perpetrators accountable. I'm very proud of the work our homicide detectives do. Our homicide clearance rate, the percentage of crimes that result in a suspect being charged, is close to 80%. And of course, we never stop working on the remaining 20%. My heart goes out to anyone who's lost a loved one to homicide, and especially to those who are losing someone now when they can't hold a large memorial service, when they can't be surrounded by friends and family. Homicide survivors see to it that even in a pandemic, no survivor is ever alone, and I'm very grateful for that. To those who are grieving a personal loss, our entire department stands with you. We've all been touched by the grief and resilience of families who've experienced this kind of loss. We hear you 
and together we honor the lives of your loved ones. Thank you. It is so important to remember that those we've lost in our community to homicide are not nameless statistics. They are our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, or sisters, our cousins, uncles, our children. They were loved and they loved others. They were real people with real identities. Our organization was founded by Gail Leland, whose son Richard was brutally kidnapped and murdered. And so as we remember each of those loved ones, I invite you to participate in our candlelight vigil by lighting a candle at this time in their memory. I lit this candle tonight in memory of Richard Leland.
As we bring this year's memorial to a close, we will be listing some of the names of victims that we've lost to homicide in our community. Remember that every one of those individuals represents countless friends and family members who are impacted by their loss. Remember it is upon all of us to seek justice, to ensure victims' rights, and to inspire hope. Be kind, be kind to yourself, and be kind to others. Thank you and good night. Abdullahi Abdullahi, Adrian Kerr, Alberto Bat, Ali Mohammed, Andrew Gallardo, Anthony Corral, Anthony Garrett, Antonio Yost, Arnold Karaski, Beatriz Alvarez, Benjamin Chavez, Benjamin Palmer, Bernice Aguirez, Bernardo Ramirez, Beverly Jones, Caleb Hatch, Carlos Vale, Casey Wright, Charles Viney, Christina Leonard, Christopher Moreno, Corey Tejera, Cindy Nelson, Dale Foxworthy, Daniela Islas, David Ramirez, David Doyle, David Rugerio, David Corteal, Davis Ochoa Borges, Emilio Smith, Eric Noriega, Eric Manuel, Eric Nanez, Fernando Broyles, Frank Bly, Frank Wise, Franklin Johnson, Gael Balmea, Jeffrey Velez, Giselle Lopez, Isaiah Suauzo, Jacob Fausto, Jaden Webb, James Maltz, Jason Garcia, Giselle Armenta, Jesse Dominguez, John Murphy, John Becker, Jordan Webb, Jose Estrada, Julia Rankin, Julian Cepeda, Julian Holmes, Justin Howell, Keith Wright, Kenneth Riggs, Kyle Olinger, Louis Jetty, Luana Encinas, Luis Mesa Salvedo, Luis Fuente, Luis Lopez Jr., Luis Diaz, Lydia Carter, Marco Ormsby, Marco Romero, Marilyn Pacheco, Mark Valenzuela, Marlon Hartley, Marty Huaraque, Marvin O'Reilly, Matt Alford, Matthew Reagan, Michael McCullough, Mirna Ortega, Nadia London, Nelani Herido, Nicole Armas, Nicholas Morelos, Paloma Gavino, Philip Reagan, Priscilla Tamez, Ramon Murillo III, Rene Orantes Jr., Ricardo Sandoval, Richard Strubo, Richard Curley, Roman Cerna, Romulo Barcarce, Ryan Hercher, Shelly Johnson, Sylvia Sabo, Sofia Lugo Hurtado, Stanley Torinesi Jr., Stephen Brashear, Stephen Quiroga, Tess Laporte, Thomas Ortenzi, Thomas Beasley, Tracy Thigpen, Zanaya Quiroz, 